Let me in my zone. Let me let me in my zone. Let me in my zone. Please don't let me. Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Kiddo Cave, and it is a very early morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. Have to get ready to uh, accompany to escort my girlfriend to some sort of like, I don't know, teeth, shit, whatever the fuck that is. We got plenty to talk about on good old Bitcoin, but I do have to keep this video a little bit on the shorter side, and I am seeing a few things in the charts uh, that are very relevant to the short term look on this. So I am expecting a little bit of a move today. I want to talk about a little bit of my trading from yesterday and some trials and tribulations as well. And, um, and other than that, I like to wish you the best of the best and the happiest of the happiest because why the fuck not, man? And so with that said, let's get into the crown trading app right in over here. We do see that Bitcoin dominance ticked up just a slight amount, but still more or less steady. Not really seeing anything too too much of interest there. Total market cap more or less uh, steady as well. But more importantly, open interest has actually shot up about 100 million. So we are putting back on positions within this region, which does tell me that Bitcoin is actually getting ready for a little bit of a move here, at least for the short term. And like I said, I will be making this video on a little bit on the shorter end, hopefully but like 20 minutes or lower than that. But uh, going over here to the actual charts themselves, just showing uh, CMEs on the daily. It looks to me like we actually do want to swipe this lower end right around here, right around that 92.50 ish. And once again, very rarely do I, you know, well, I say more aggressive things like this, but it is looking uh, quite likely here. Um, looking at uh, regular spot charts, same sort of thing. We broke the 21 expansion moving average yesterday, that yellow moving average right here. And now it does have a negative slope alongside the red 10 simple. So I think that we are kind of gearing up for another swipe somewhere in this 93, 94 in this region once again. Um, and uh, and and then I'd actually be looking for Bitcoin to probably not break down after that. Um, if Bitcoin does actually break down further below, let's call it 9,200, I would extend targets all the way down to, actually, that would be it, about 9,200, so fair enough. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, that uh, that would be there that I'm looking for if it actually does break that region, um, perhaps on like a four-hour delta closure. So everything that we've been speaking about for the last uh, few weeks is still very much relevant. This 9,550, 9,500-ish pivot, incredibly important for the, uh, for the long-term and macro. And of course, as long as we're kind of not breaking below there on these higher time frames not necessarily a higher time frame but like a 12 hour daily and above i'm not necessarily bearish on top of that but i do think that bitcoin has a little bit of short-term downside here looking at the four hour total time frame right around right around here we do see that bitcoin's once again basing off that white 200 cent moon average and also the purple 200 exponential moon average right here which have been getting things more or less well throughout this whole rally but uh it does look to me like things are a little bit more on the heavier side all momentum oscillators are pointed down right now we got four hour three hour two hour and hourly stokes all kind of in limbo right now and then mediated by the higher terms or sorry the medium term time frames which we got 12 hour stokes actually rejecting getting out of the bearish control zone right here or at least or at least prospectively rejecting getting out of the bearish control zone right here and i believe that the dailies are also down as well yes indeed they are so i do think that bitcoin is going to give another attempt to the downside here i don't think that it actually breaks and i want to talk about my trading from yesterday so yesterday i spoke about a long position that i had i've been taking like the same fucking trade for the last two weeks it's been beautiful i've been Every time that Bitcoin comes down around like 95 to 95, 50 ish region, I've been taking longs. I've been doing, and I've been doing that up until, uh, well, yesterday night. Um, the trade that I took yesterday, right around here, Obviously, I only hit my first kind of take profit target right around that 9850-ish region, and then after that, actually got kicked out. Um, to, uh, hit, uh, hit, uh, hit on my stop loss right at, right below like 9750-ish region. So I actually did pull in a little bit of a profit on that trade. But after that, I put on the same trade a little bit too aggressively right around that 9600 tick right here before I went to bed. Well, a few like a few tick, or, or sorry, a few like uh, four hour dolls before I went to bed, and that one obviously ended up turning into the loss category. So I want to specifically speak to that right now. That uh, you know, at the end of the day, my sort of trading style and whatnot is very much predicated upon the fact that until something actually changes, I'm going to pretty much do, be, keep on doing the same thing. And in this scenario right here, this is one trade not working out out of, well, like one, I think, I, I think there's like three or four attempts in here. So at the end of the day, I just want to show that... Um, you know, playing these small, playing these small moves, or what what would typically be be referred to as a small move. Uh, however, in like other markets, people would be absolutely like losing their minds over these moves. Um, uh, is very much is you know it's is you know is very much uh, very much viable. Uh, hitting four signal, hitting four singles is the same as hitting a home run. Don't need to hit a home run every time. And God damn it, for Bitcoin, we haven't even been in home run territory for the last uh, month or so. Just been kind of consolidating in, in this uh, falling channel that we've been looking at for the past uh, three four weeks now i believe it is anyways putting on the uh put sorry putting on the um 
the what's called the uh, the drawing tools right here we are kind of playing around this lower blue box territory once again like I said I do think that we're gonna get a little bit of a swipe here lower but I do not think that it actually breaks if it does break then targets will be extended all the way down to um, likely 91 no 9200 9200 would be the area um, I would expect to bounce at 9200 but that's when things actually do start to look like they are quite literally breaking down and uh, and I would prepare for a bounce from that region however lower lower uh, lower targets after that lower targets likely being in the middle of the $8,000 region like 85 to 8600 ish regions where I'd be looking towards I believe if we do throw on a, uh, a fib on this um, we should have some sort of major fib coming in that region you don't see that a lot of major move numbers come in this region and let me just reach my coffee because I'm goddamn thirsty right now Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Yuhan Mota. Whatever the fuck that is. It's really, really good. It's this like Finnish, very, very light coffee, but it's extremely caffeinated and it doesn't really kill your stomach. So I really enjoy that. Anyways, if you are having issues with your digestive systems, definitely check out some uh some some light roast coffee, not that dark shit. It's a bunch of bullshit. Anyways, there we go. So we can see that the white 200 simple on the daily is coming in right around, yeah, about 8,800. And we see that the 200 exponential moon average right here, the purple moon average coming in right around about 8,600. So I do believe that we'd probably end up somewhere right around there if Bitcoin actually does break down. I'm still not necessarily conv uh, convinced that Bitcoin actually breaks down, but let's put a fib on it and see if it lines up with anything else. And what do you know? We see the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement coming in, in the middle of the 8,000s uh, 8, as well. I believe that the weekly moving averages are going to have some pretty major uh, pretty major signals going on in this region as well. We do see, yes, the yellow 21 expansion moving average coming in right around about 8,800, 10 simple right above it. And usually every time that we've gotten this cross, Bitcoin has come down and tested around it. Not not necessarily exactly into it, doesn't need to, but around it is, is all well and good. So I just want to show that the higher time frames I'm still not necessarily bearish on um, even if Bitcoin does have a little bit of downside here I actually would be looking at this as a little bit of an opportunity at least for you know a nice scalp bounce play um, but looking at it and kind of back testing it throughout history you do see that this cross typically happens during periods of consolidation when market cycles shift right around here great sell right around here great buy right around here great sell right around here phenomenal buy a few one-offs in 2014 to 2015 but overall still gets some momentum incredibly well and with this ticking up I do put the I still do uh, 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 give the nod to the bulls here is what I'm is the words that I'm looking for. Um, and uh, and on top of that, if we throw in the Trollinger bands, which is again in limbo, we do see the meeting of the Trollinger band is coming in right around about 8500, which again has been a pretty damn good way to get price action. You know, the weekly Trollinger bands are more or less more or less <laughs> more or less pretty damn good. I hate to admit it just because uh, I don't know. It always seems like I don't I don't know. But for whatever reason, my mentor really had it out for the Trollinger bands. He used them, but he'd always be like, yeah, these fucking things again, you know, <laughs> and so I guess that's kind of been passed off to me. But you do see a pretty good, uh, pretty good relationship um, over a long period of time time between that median as a nice basing point for bull markets and sell-off point for bear markets and of course anytime that we kind of uh, test the outer the outer ends of this bands as we t as we did right in over here especially for the first time usually gets knocked back somewhere around the uh, the median band as well so that's just simply a 20 a 20 some average right there no no uh, no pun intended no no redundancy intended but again just want to show that uh, if Bitcoin does break down uh, for like a more a more aggressive play 85 8600 ish region where I'd kind of be looking towards I do want to check out GBDC GBDC was once again the harbinger of death and despair we were keeping a strong eye on it last night in the program chat and uh, this one breaking down much before um, Bitcoin did from that 80 or sorry 9800 ish level and uh, being that sort of uh, uh, that sort of canary in the coal mine, I suppose you could say. I do expect it to bounce from this region, to be fair. Um, but after that, it's going to be absolutely critical to see if it actually does hold the medium band of this. If it fails to hold the medium band, meaning that uh, if we actually get an open and close below this, uh, to, which is which is a potential today, then I would extend downside targets, uh, especially into the uh, middle of the 8,000s. And that would be another kind of more easy way of getting it. Anyways, uh, going back into Bitcoin right now, I've been speaking about all this bearish stuff. Let me just kind of shore up my thoughts here because I, I, I want to be very clear in this. 
Well, I do think that Bitcoin swipes lower here. I'm not convinced that it actually breaks here. I, I do think that Bitcoin is going to probably test around like 9400 ish region. Um, but uh, I would I would also expect at the very least a short term bounce off that region. And then we get to play the game of, OK, is this is this is this a legitimate breakdown or not? As you do see that uh, Bitcoin on the daily trollinger bands right here is going to have a chance to not only test the bottom side of the trollinger bands, which if it does close out uh, to the bottom side below, which is currently uh, 9400 ish region, a little bit below 9400 ish region. Then yes, I would expect for the continuation of the downside, that would be another great um, uh, trigger for those for for a move below nine thousand. Um, but right now, you know, I, I, first and foremost, I'd expect to bounce off there and then play the game uh, near the daily deal to close, which I'll be asleep for. So it doesn't even matter. Anyways, um, I do want to check out and, uh, and 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 align this with the expected moves chart. I didn't even look at it yesterday, which was a little bit strange. So typically, always I typically do just by default. But uh, putting back on the uh, put it back on all the drawing tools again, keeping in mind the critical levels right here right around about 9500 on the on the lower term time frames or 9550 on like a medium you know 12 hour or above time frame is the critical area i want to be judging how likely is it that we actually break that area today so we can go over here to our expected moves chart i'm currently on a 12 hour so that's going to be it's actually not going to be around the daily total close because i am doing this uh, video a little bit earlier this morning but uh, we do see that the bottom side of the first navigation is coming in right around about 9350 ish region so i would say that if bitcoin does make a four a attempt down there probably does bounce off so uh, you know right now i'd be saying around 9350 to 9400 region i do think that bitcoin's probably gonna have a nice little swipe down uh, swipe to the downside there and then probably hold these lows probably at least try to bounce from them and uh, same thing essentially shown on the daily the daily a little bit lower right around 9300 ish region which is interesting though because if we actually do hit 93 we will technically have a wick um, a wick continuation from last week's low at uh, 9312 um, now of course these are like getting really 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 specific but i do believe that if we took out that last prior low uh, at around 9312 that's also going to be another good insightful uh trigger that we probably do end up going lower at the very least test around 9200 probably bounce there and then i would i would imagine after the bounce probably gets sold into and and then lower after that but like i said i, I want to be very clear in stating this until we actually fully and formally get a break below this region i'm, I'm not bearish um and I still run with the former assumption. And keep in mind, we are still in a falling channel right here. And this falling channel does have a bottom side support where right around fucking 9,400. So I do think that, um, you know, Bitcoin's going to pro probably try to bounce off that area first and foremost, probably spend a little bit of time around the uh, time down around there as well and scare everyone out. But uh, as long as we don't get any higher time frames closing below there, I am I am skeptical to get uh, to to look for that move again below 9,000. Let me just take another sip. Mm. It's good, man. It's getting cold, though. Anyways, um, by the same token to the upside, upside, upside targets are actually a little bit easier now. Now that we have this last little uh, lower high right around here at that. Uh, where, where are we on a closing basis? Yeah, right below 10,000. So if Bitcoin could close above 10,000 on a daily total closing base. Um, basis, I actually would be looking for just further upside, probably back up to about 10.6. Nice little short step. Uh, uh, sorry, short. Um, uh, short, short pullback from that region, and then continuation of that ten, nine, eleven thousand dollar target. My main, uh, my main consideration for Bitcoin is still born off of the uh, off of the weekly chart for CMEs, which does still have this lovely inverted head and shoulders in play. Although it is certainly under, it is it is certainly under a little bit of pressure here. But that measure move is still pointed up mo uh, very much towards about eleven thousand to eleven thousand five hundred to twelve thousand. Basically the same highs that we've been dealing with ever since uh, August, June, July of twenty nineteen, and also. February February 2018 of um, of you know of the prior uh, real or like actual bear market cycle or, or more intense part of the bear market cycle. Um, anyways, uh, I think it's better shown on this chart right here with this blue box territory. Also, uh, also verified by the volume profile showing that we actually have a change of behavior above that region. You do see that we kind of have like a it's called a vacuum right here where essentially uh, where you have a very 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 low amount of volume uh, low low value notes essentially and then kind of encompassed by relatively higher although I wouldn't necessarily call these high but overall it would incite that we have a change of behavior above that region as I reach for my coffee once again. Mm. And that's at the point where, you know, we can get actually like super bullish for the macro as uh, 16,000 and 20,000 would, you know, we, you know, we'd obviously want to look at it, you know, on the shorter term timeframes, but over time, I do believe that they would get hit. Um, anyways, uh, 
looks to me, yeah, I have this blue box right here coming in from that last consolidation, also outlined by the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. Okay, great. Well, lots of major movement numbers coming there. Okay, great as well. Um, so other than that, you know, really not too much to be said. I think I've covered just about everything that I do want to say. It's only been 15 minutes. Um, can probably stay on here for a little bit longer and check out some of the top uh, altcoins and see how they're doing and come up and come up with a further bias on this. Yeah, Mr. Buterall as well does look to me like he probably wants to make another uh, perhaps attempt somewhere around that 21 exponential moving average somewhere around perhaps 250 ish region not again not a uh, not not, uh, not a death sentence for this one now we do have the lower highs being printed in here but we also do have some higher lows as well which to me says that we are in consolidation phase and we are in a decision phase and realistically I actually still do look at it like this as well I think that this chart was made on the 12 hour yes indeed it was so um so uh, until we actually get a 12 hour total closing below this rising trend line right here, which is essentially synonymous with the uh, yellow 21 expansion moving average, I do have a little bit of difficulty looking for that extra downside. However, if it does break next, the next area that I look for is again, about 250 ish region. Um, we do see momentum also is freshly wanting to turn down as well. I, you know, I, I, I do think that it is going to break actually here. It is, it is very, very likely to test some downside. Um, keep in mind that traditional markets are actually kind of break or broke down pretty damn hard last night. And I do think that that's kind of driving the crypto markets right here as well. And they do seem to be correlated on the macro you know that, that, uh, that, that whole statement right there is going to catch a lot of flack. Um, I don't really have enough time to show the correlations between them to uh, right now. Well, we could do it really, really quickly. Um, just, just to kind of get rid of these, get get rid of get rid of these objections before they even start. But uh, here is a correlation chart between both uh, the uh, the major boards of U.S. markets that spy in the uh, in the blue line chart in the background there, and then Bitcoin in the white line chart. You can see that over the macro, uh, ever since the inception of Bitcoin, they've been more or less correlated with each other on the macro. Meaning that when Bitcoin is in an uptrend, spy is in an uptrend. When 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 spy is correcting, which means like a ten per, like a five to ten percent move in traditional markets, Bitcoin's correcting as well although we look at that as a uh 750 to 70 percent retracement anyways you know they you know they play together on the macro quite well as verified by the correlation coefficient right here which is showing a very strong correlation at about, at about 0.62 um which is pretty fucking good i mean very rarely do you even see that high but more importantly what's even more impressive is the r squared right here which measures the efficacy of this uh, correlation coefficient essentially it's running a it's 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 seeing how much of that regression actually fits the data and what do you know it's not 0.68 which is just incredibly high i've never seen bitcoin have this strong of a correlation um or sorry this this stronger than r squared with another asset um this is quite literally the strongest one in fact it's even stronger than than gold for example i'll give you an example right here uh, where's my gold there it is where's my gold um <laughs> the correlation coefficients around the same not 0.61 so pretty damn strong but uh, but r squared while it is rising here and kind of uptrending it is still about half that read it's not 0.328 and you can see that over the long period of time they don't play together as well um but uh, but uh, but at the end of the day, I just want to show that really, really quick. So traditional markets kind of um, putting in at the very least a medium time frame top yesterday. Or let's actually go to them right around here. Hold on. Um, I do think does not bode well for Bitcoin. Now, I would expect traditional marks to bounce off this region. We do see that uh, this I mean, this was like t literally a fucking ten ten dollar down open. I mean, that's just insane uh on kind of like an island gap not 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 the not necessarily an, an island gap top but i would expect to bounce around here around the yellow 21 expansion moving average and kind of our basing area from uh early er, early 2020 and what's up uh potolemy good to meet you man it's a hard name to say but it's a pleasure to meet you my friend um <laughs> anyways uh yeah so you know i you know i would be looking for a bounce off this region the question is this bounce gets sold into where you know where where are points of pressure i think the obvious one or the most preliminary one is right around 325 i don't think that's a huge one though the big one is right here right around about 329 and uh and i do think that it probably will test that region the question is can it actually can it actually take that region out? Um, and uh, and that'll speak to like the greater direction of this asset. Anyways, back on the cryptos really, really quick as uh, I'm kind of all over the place right now, but let's go check out Mrs. Litecoin. She's also been a driving force within this market. She did print a higher high on a daily closing basis yesterday, but just like the other ones kind of slumping down. And I do think that this one's likely getting ready for a test somewhere to this blue box territory around the low $70 number, right? Uh, like 71, 71 and a half, something like that, most likely. Um, and I'd probably be looking for a bounce off this region as well. 
uh, pro uh, problems here though because we do see momentum oscillators uh, if they you know if they start turning down they got plenty of room to go to, uh, to go to the downside so um, if that area does fail I would look for the last prior sw uh, swing low at uh, February 20th to operate as at the very least a nice bouncy bounce area but it's not gonna look as good over there unfortunately uh, let's go check out some of the other uh, some of the other ones since we do have a few more minutes here looking at uh, EOS um, kind of on kind of on like the last ledge for love right here needs to hold up above uh, uh, what is it like 398 399 which can, we can just call it four bucks on a 12 hour deal to closing basis if that does fail i'd look for another retest of this wick down here at about 360. um what about neo neo same thing kind of in limbo here on that last line of love if you want to call it that let's go check out ripples ripple um, i don't have a last line of love in here but i do have but I can put a night, but I can put one in. <laughs> there we go. And of course, um, that also means that uh, you know, do, you know, th this one's already kind of gotten a swipe down. But uh, if the rest of the market wants to swipe down, this one will. This one will do another one. The question is, does it actually close below twenty six and a half cents? If it does, then bad. If it doesn't, then probably probably goes a little bit more sideways and then gives another test to the upside. So going back on to Bitcoin here, I do want to wrap this up relatively quickly. Um, you know, I, you know, I do think that we probably get another swipe down somewhere right around 94 ish, but, uh, until we actually fully informally close either a 12 hour dildo below 9550 or a four hour dildo below 9500, even 9500 now in a four hours, a little bit difficult just cause uh, we do have this descending trend line right here, which as, which has actually been getting things quite well. Um, I wouldn't get too bearish on this. I would look at it as kind of like a bouncy bounce attempt. And then of course, with that last local high being printed in right here, we can now once again, move down the point of. Um, of continuation to the upside just a little bit more as before it was right here at about 10 200 now it is currently hovering right around 9950 10 thousand ish we, we could say 9950 actually i think that's a little bit more accurate um so any sort of a 12 hour deal closure above 9950 and yes i would look for ultimately a move towards 10 6 um a probably small pullback there and then continuation of like 10 9 11 000 region and then continuation to the to you know to the cme targets also it's going to be a target just born from the uh you know from uh from this as a hey as a descending channel right right around here as well so you know i still do put i still do put the favor with the bulls here um however just uh just well it, it is actually a little bit a uh, little bit in in trouble here so if we actually did break to the upside yeah it would be showing up. okay about 10 seven okay cool um let's quickly go back to the expected moves chart i do want to see what it looks like on a lower term time frame and yeah more or less more or less exactly what we're saying so to kind of wrap things up uh, really, really quick, um, Bitcoin probably short term test a little bit more downside somewhere around 94, maybe 93.50 ish region, perhaps in line with this downtrend uh, with the or sorry with the bottom side support of this um, of this as a uh, bull flag. Now, if it actually breaks that region, I would look for a quick a quick wick down to 9200, probably bounce around there and then bounce likely will fail after that. And we'd probably look down towards the, uh, toward, you know, towards like the middle of the 8,000s, like 8,600-ish region. Um, uh, however, if uh, Bitcoin just doesn't break here on one of those formidable timeframes, then I'd look for it to slowly kind of flatten out and then turn back around and use this as the next sort of uh, pivot point for that upside continuation. Other than that, I'm gonna be leaving you off. I will hopefully be back on Twitch later tonight. I've had some technical difficulties. Uh, the servers last night were, were on, offline or whatever the fuck it was um now i'm trying to like repair my client which is being a massive pain in the asshole right now as well so hopefully i can figure things out before then if not we'll play some call of duty um and until then uh i'd like to wish you well take care and until next time